Hallelujah, Jesus. Can we just open our mouths this morning and just worship God? Well, Jesus is a good God, right? He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the praise. He deserves it all. He deserves every single clap, every single dance, every single murmur. Hallelujah, Jesus.
say, my hallelujah, my hallelujah, Lord, you. Though do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear you. My hallelujah, Lord, One more time, say. sing that sound to the king. Oh, just open your mouth and give him that sound. Oh, help me sing. someone on the board. Also include Sister Yvonne Jordan who lost her mother. Let's just pray for her comfort and her family's comfort and peace in the name of Jesus. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. God, you are Lord of all. You have dominion, oh God, over principalities and powers. You have all power in your hand. You are the all-knowing God everywhere present at the same time. You are sovereign and you are Lord. We submit our will and we submit our way to you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, crying, Abba, Father. God, we ask, Lord Jesus, not our will, but thy will be done. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we ask that you cleanse us, O oh God, from all unrighteousness, that you forgive us of our sins and wash us, O oh God, that we can be whiter than snow, creating us a clean heart, Renew a right spirit within us in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus, for your people. We ask, God, that you continue to cover us, oh God. Continue to speak a word over us in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for great are you and greatly to be praised. We magnify you today, God, and we exalt you, Lord Jesus. God, we lift you up today, God, for you're high and you're lifted up and you're trained for the temple. The angels cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was an innocent to come. Father, I pray right now, oh God, for healing, oh God. We thank you, God, that you're Jehovah Rapha. You are the great physician, oh God. You made the lame to walk, the dumb to talk, the deaf to hear, the blind to see. You set the captives free. You open prison doors. Whose report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Your report says we are healed. Your report says victory. Your report says we are free. We thank you for healing today, God, in the name of Jesus. Speak a word over us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you, God. Send your angels, oh God, to the hospital. Send your angels.
angels, oh God, to the nursing home, to those that are shut in with healing in their wings, oh God. Send your minister and angels in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, God. Oh, God, give us the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Give us beauty for ashes, oh God, that we may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. God, we thank you and we praise you right now. We ask that you increase the faith of your people today, God. We pray that their faith will not fail, oh God, as you told Peter, that Satan wanted to sift him like wheat. But you already prayed that his faith will not fail. So I pray today, God, that our faith will not fail today, God. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your word is spirit and life, oh God. Lord Jesus, we pray right now, oh God, for your word, oh God, to pierce. Your word to penetrate, oh God. Divide us under cut, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For your word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Dividing bone from marrow, spirit from soul, oh God. The discern of the hearts and thoughts of man. I pray that your word today will fall on good ground, oh God. Lord Jesus, that we will bear fruit, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That you will manifest like never before, oh God. Let the sanctuary be filled with your glory oh God. Your Shekinah glory in the name of Jesus. Release the anointing today that destroys every yoke in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you and we praise you for Bishop Barrington Golson and Pastor Robert Stewart and their families, God. We ask God to continue, oh God, to speak over their lives, oh God. We thank you, God, that you continue to anoint them afresh, oh God. Lord, that they will fulfill your will and your purpose in their lives. That they will complete their assignment, God, that's been given to them in the name of Jesus. That they will continue to impact and influence, God, the community, the nation, and the world. We thank you for your people, God. We thank you that we will be as one, oh God. That there will be no division among us in the name of Jesus. That we'll be in one accord. Unify us with your love today. For your love is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So we say, praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to Calvary Tabernacle, and we welcome you to the family. You may be seated. You may be seated. We are so glad that you chose to worship with us today. If you're tuned in on YouTube or Facebook, we would like to welcome you as well. We say a big Calvary hello. We are connecting through relationships. Last week, Pastor Stuart reminded us about the importance of worship, connection through the story of Abraham offering Isaac. I love the demonstration that he gave. One, worship requires a sacrifice. Two, obedience. Three, an altar. Four, and a willingness to offer what we love most. We desire to have that strong worship connection throughout 2024. Can, can we get an amen to that? Kids Church is in session. If you have children between the ages of 3 to 11, you can send them over to our Kids Church. Please ask the ushers for assistance. Elder Sermo would like to meet all youth, 12 to 18, in the front foyer after church. We celebrate all February birthdays. If you have a birthday in February, please stand so we can celebrate you. Amen, amen. We praise God for yet another year of blessings. If you don't see your name on the screen, please contact the church office. To all members, your end of year giving statements for 2023 have been emailed and mailed out. As always, you can check your records on the church app. If you are not on the app, you can ask a team member to assist you in the lobby. If you have any questions about your statement, please contact the church office. Couples, get ready this year to connect through relationships. 
next Monday night, February 12th at 7.30 p.m. Mark your calendars, couples. We will have a relationship seminar by certified marriage and relationship counselor, Dr. Roger Ball. This two-hour seminar will help you maximize your relationships if you're married or not married and help build a better relationship in your life. These sessions are open to anyone looking to develop a better relationship. You can sign up online or today at the back with Minister Everill and Judith Garrick. Please, Minister Everill and Judith Garrick, please give a wave so we know who you are. Great. Just a reminder to all members that Tuesday is our church fast day, and we are asking everyone to fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Also, the eight-week courses are in full swing at 8 p.m. for all those students who have registered. Yes, excitement. If you would like to become a member of this great church, our new members class is open, and they also offer Zoom classes. Please ask an usher for more information. Follow us on all social media platforms and keep updated. You are also invited to download the new app to stay connected. Lastly, we have launched our Touch 5 evangelism strategy. We encourage you to get a Touch 5 card and pick five people that you want to win to the Lord. This strategy consists of these five steps. One, we must pray with purpose. Two, we must pursue with love. Third, we must persuade with truth. Fourth, we must perfect through mentorship. And fifth, we must promote through discipleship. Each quarter, the person who invites the most will receive, can I get a drum roll please? A $500 gift card. So please watch the screen as we give you more details. In Matthew chapter 9, the Lord declares, The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. As we connect and fellowship, our hearts resonate with the abundant harvest of souls. In Long Island, New York, home to 7 million in Nassau County, with 1.4 million precious souls, a divine opportunity awaits. In the town of Hempstead, 766,000. 793 souls yearn for hope and in Uniondale, 24,759 hearts seek the transformative power of the gospel. Our church, nestled in Hempstead, has 54,000 neighbors. We need you as we launch the Touch 5 Souls campaign. As we embark on this journey, we invite each and every one of you to participate in our Touch 5 strategy. Inspired by the teachings of our Savior, who implores us to go forth and bear witness, we acknowledge that the task is great, but our faith is greater. Join us as we embrace the mantra, if it's to be, it's up to me. Together, let us embark on a collective mission to touch five. Praise the Lord, Calvary. Huh. I'll bless that at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth.
worship you and we adore you, holy God of Israel, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac. You are worthy of the praise. Come on, somebody help me give God a praise in here. Open up your mouth if you haven't done it yet and give God a praise in here. You're worthy of the glory and the honor to your name. Oh, that, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness. You're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor. I don't know about you, but I know I came in this house this morning with a praise on my lips. Some of us were sick last week, but we're, we're feeling better this week, right? And we've come in with a hands lifted, voices raised to give the Lord of hosts the praise. I dare you to give God one praise before you take your seats. Open up your mouths and bless the name of Jesus with me. Woo! Come on, you're so good. You're so good. Yeah. When I think of his goodness and what he's done for me, when I think of his goodness and how he set me free, I want to dance. One more minute. Think about anything that God has done for you in the last four weeks. And if you have that on your mind, I want you to get beside yourself in his presence and give him praise. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Oh, when I think of his goodness and what he's done for me. When I think of his goodness and how he set me free, I want to dance, 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 Gentlemen, praise him, 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 praise him. Come on, something is bubbling up in my spirit. And we say, to welcome all of our guests to the sanctuary. Do I have some first, second, or third time guests? Can you just wave your hand so I can see who you are at? Now here's what we're gonna do this morning because I sense that the Spirit of God is all over somebody in this room. And I know the Spirit of God wants to touch somebody else. So I want you to greet three people and as you do, ask the Spirit of God to fall afresh on them, all right? Here we go. Come on, let's find somebody and let's greet them with the love of God. I am out of praise. I'm out of praise. Help me say, I am out of praise. I'm out of praise. I'm out of praise. I'm out of praise. Help me say, I am out of praise. I'm out of praise. And I got to lay it down. I'm out of praise. praise this morning. A praise that doesn't need keyboards. A praise that doesn't need drums. Woo! Hey! A praise that's bubbling up on the inside of you. Woo! You may be seated so I can see who the praises are. Woo! Oh! I see Sister in the aisle is a praiser. Come on, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. So I can see who the praisers are. Who came out of your bed on a cold February morning to give God praise. And we say, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta live it out. I gotta praise. So we give you great glory, God. We give
give you great worship. We give you great honor. For you alone are worthy of all of those things. And we pre prepare ourselves now to give unto the Lord. Give unto the Lord, oh ye mighty. Give unto the Lord the glory to his name. You may be seated if you can. We're, the ushers have prepared you to give. This morning is a wonderful day. How many are thankful that you're alive and in the house of the Lord one more time? How many worshipers came with an advanced worship that you didn't need anybody to prod you on? You came with your own worship this morning. Amen. We're delighted to have all of you in the sand shore in the house of the Lord one more time. The ushers are preparing you to give. And they also, I'm going to ask them if they have those, those, those relationship cards, if they can make sure everyone receives one at this time. Amen, amen, amen. As they do, we want to just one more time honor God for being in this room. Thank him for being with us one more time as we come together as one body. We learned last week that out of thousands of hours we spend in a year, only 150, if it's a two-hour service, is spent in God's presence. So thanks to all of you that have desired to come out to his presence and be in his house in person so we can touch and agree, we can believe together, and we're believing that, that God has a word from us for us this morning. How many believe that to be true? I said, how many believe that God has a word for us this morning? Amen. Amen. I just want to make one very important plug. Can I just see all those that are married or you're a couple or you're looking to get married? Can you stand, please? All of, all of the folks in here that are coupled up, I need to see who you are. Stand, 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 stand. Amen, amen, amen. We just want to make a very special pitch and a very special plug. This is a year of relationship. Everybody say relationships. And we want to make sure we are doing a better job at connecting with the ones that we love. So don't sit until you get this card. The ushers are really panning this out. I'm going to make a very special plug. We're very honored to have Dr. Roger Ball with us. Amen. Put your hands together for him. An expert in relationships, in, in marriage, and, and, and giving you the tools that you need to be successful. Now, this is not just for married folks. This is for any of you that want to have success in relationships, whether it be with your boss, your co-workers. It's open to everyone. It will be on Monday, February 12th, and we're asking you to make an effort to come out. We're putting some effort and some funds behind this, so we want to ensure that we get a full support as we learn, we grow, and we learn how to navigate relationships together. Amen? Amen. We have four ways to give. You can either give through the app. You can give by Zelle. The number is on the board. You can also give by cash or check. You can also give by ATM. On both sides, we have somebody to receive from you on the ATM. So if you, could, if you have ATM, if you can go, go to that line at this time, we'd appreciate that so we can move this along expeditiously. Hey, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We found that the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. Let's stand together. These are not debts we owe, but these are seeds that we sow, and we sow them into good ground. How many know that this is good ground? And we're believing that God, the God of the harvest, will prosper us, will favor us, and as we take this exercise of faith together, he will bless us. I'm going to ask the, you, you singers, you can go down and get your offerings. That, that's good. Go get your offerings, please. Amen. Everybody needs to give this, give this morning. I'll sing for the offering. Can you wave your hands, wave your offerings? We believe that this is the real action of our faith. This is how we prove God. And we're believing God for him to continue to increase our lives. Dear Father, we come to you this morning. We're thankful that you, the God of the harvest, are in our lives. We have seen you do it before, and we have seen you do it in other people's lives. And we're asking you in this season to do it in our lives. This week, this very week, this first week of February, we're asking you, O oh God, by your spirit, O oh God, to bless us, favor us, shine upon us. And as we do this unto you, as an act of faith, as an act of trust in you, you will measure back out to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We give you praise and we give you glory. We give you honor for it belongs unto you. And all the people of God shout in Jesus' name. 
I need some more help. All the people of God shout in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's come with celebration as the uh, ushers direct you. And we're coming at this time celebrating and worshiping the Lord together. Amen. And yeah, we are a chosen Jenna. We are a chosen Jenna. has one please for the most part the praise team up here come on wave them if you have them let me see who has one For February, can you give God a praise as they come down the aisle?
Mr. Vish Elder Vishwanath Maharaj as he comes. Praise the Lord, everyone. Can you just wave? Come on, wave your hands. Come on, as we celebrate our new members. Come on, come on. Thank you, thank you. You may have your seat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. What a presence of the Lord in this place. Amen. We are so honored to bring to you um, these new members. And we're so excited that today is a celebration day on behalf of our uh, Bishop Barrington Golson. Can we give our Bishop a hand? The visionary of this organization and our pastor thank you sir for your leadership your mentorship they are leading us and we follow them in christ we thank you for the opportunity to serve in this capacity to bring these wonderful people to you can you give them a hand come on we 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 are so appreciated of them there's so much relationships here and we thank god for them coming here to calvary uh minister keon will do the rest thank you Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our new members are here. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. As I call the names, um, Pastor will um, give them our special um, gift um, to welcome them to our church. So our first new member is the Roan Ball. Then we have Joseph Hannon. Then we have um, Tracy Hannon. Kathleen Henry. Adia John. Robert Madura. Kenya Matthews. Christopher Watson, Carrie Ann Watson, and family. Praise God. These are our new members. Okay, Pastor. Okay. So at this time, we will ask our new members to speak um, for 30 seconds about how warm and how great this church is. <laughs> in this church, I wasn't looking for flaws. That's everywhere. I was looking to see who was this church, church's first love, which is Jesus Christ. Check. I was looking for fellowship. Check. And I was looking for the fear of the Lord. Check. So this house is blessed. I want to give honor and, and praise to God for our bishop, our pastor, our elders, um, all the ministers and brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, this church is fueled by love. I can feel it. I can see it and I can taste because I also found food. Amen. Uh, amen. Th good morning, everybody. Um, this church is really beautiful. Um, I I'm just so blessed. Me and my family are so blessed to be a part of this great ministry with such good leadership. I mean, 32 years and you guys have always, you guys, yes, clap to yourself because, I mean, enter God too, so consistent, 32 years. I mean, one thing I'm passionate about is altar calls, and it's happening every single week. That is beautiful, right? And also, um, as far as the music is excellent, Minister LJ, the music is excellent. Yeah. The word, food, um, kids ministry, right? <laughs> There's a lot of things going on here. And the community, right? We're a church. We got to, and, and, and also, too, we have, um, you know, evangelism going on now as far as reaching people. I mean, I want to be a part of that. I mean, I've been saved for so long. I've been saved for so long. I want to be a part of that. So if you see me sitting around, say, hey, Chris, come on. Time to go. So God bless you guys. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I greet my new bishop new pastor, my new saints in God, you know, 
One of, one, of the, one of the toughest decisions in life is to choose a church, church home. Amen. But the first time we came to Calvary, first thing, the anointed and the choir made it easy. Amen. The children ministry made it easy. Amen. The word of God that God speak to the bishop and the pastor made it easy. Amen. But most important, the presence of God that's in Calvary Amen. made it easy. Praise the Lord, Calvary. Praise the Lord, Calvary. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I am a familiar face to some, but hello, and I'm so happy to be a member of Calvary. I just thank God for Bishop. I thank God for Pastor. I feel the love in this place, and I am so welcomed, and thank you. Thank you to all the teachers spending your time with us every Sunday morning, teaching us, even though we it's a review over again. It doesn't matter because we need to remember it. So I thank you all, and I just pray that we just all grow in love. Thank you. Good morning. Bishop, Pastor, Lady Janice, and the elders of the church. I'm happy to see what God brings in this church for me and everyone. Praise the Lord, Calvary. I am honored and happy, delighted to be part of this church. Bishop, I greet you. Pastor, I greet you. I greet all the elders and Lady Janice. Um, I'm nervous, I'm trembling, I speak from my voice. But today I can say that hell lost another one. And I am free. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Calvary. Praise the Lord. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. First of all, I'd like to praise God. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Bishop. All you guys, um, I'm a baby in the woods with all this, and I really appreciate all the love and support I've got from everybody, and I'm just very excited for the path I'm going on, and praise God all the time. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I want to give thanks and honor to Bishop, the pastor, and to the congregation for welcoming me. I just want to say that just like you need a membership to go to Costco to feed your body, to provide nutrients to your physical self, just like you need a gym membership to strengthen your physical self. You may think that you can work out from home, but it's nothing like going to the gym. And just like those things, ever since I stepped foot in Calvary, my spiritual self has been fed. My physical self, my, my spiritual self has been strengthened. My relationship with God has been strengthened. And I'm excited to continue and grow at this church. Thank you all for being so welcoming. Praise the Lord. All right, we have some preachers in the house as well. Can we give them one more hand clap of praise? Come on, you can do better than that. Can you receive them this morning and make them feel welcome? We wanted us to appreciate uh, Sister McFarlane, Sister Minister Jackie, uh, Sister Marcia, and the team that works with Elder Vision, Minister Ken. Can you put your hands together for all of those that work to make it happen? You guys are going to be turned into the hands of one of the most important people in the world to me, and that's my wife. Amen. Jenny's come at this time. Amen. She and the team will be taking, taking it from here, and uh, we're excited to see how you will be transitioned into ministry. We, we're looking for different ministry leaders in this group, aren't we? You can see it already. You can see it already. Uh, Bishop is going to come to give the charge, but before I do, I want to say how God, God is so good, isn't he? Yeah. So, uh... Um, Tri-State last year, 23, it went so well and everything went well. And we had youth competitors in the competition. But it turned out that in my mind, it was the only year in our history we never had a young person from our church in the competition. Well, today we did. <laughs> because Adia was in that competition. And now she is a member of our church. Can somebody give God praise 
God did it again. God did it again. Bishop is coming at this time to give you a charge. Come on, let's give Minister Elder Vision, Minister Kenna, and clap for a job well done and the team that's working with them. The new membership class is an important one. And um, we're so happy and delighted to see the, the families that's coming into the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. The apostle writing to the Galatians church in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 8 and 9, I'll read for your hearing. For he that wrought effectually in Peter, the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and to Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. This is not just a ritual that we do at the church. It's the biblical thing. The right hand of God is the position of power and authority. And when they extended that to, to Paul and to Barnabas, they were saying to them, we recognize what God has done in your life. And by extending that right hand, we are empowering you to do the work that God has called you and saved you to do. I want us to stand right in your seat where you are. And just shake your neighbor's right hand if you're comfortable doing that. Just shake their right hand. See, you got power. You got power. The extension of the hand that we'll give to these new members today is an induction into the body of Christ here at Calvary. We try to say it every week as best as we can in a subtle way. This is not the only part of the body of Christ. This is a part of it. And but we welcome you to join this part in this mission. And I'm believing God is going to use you in a great way. I can see already your gifts that's bubbling up. I'll definitely say to you, do not let anybody, Chris, I have to invite you to do what you got to do. I, I, I was challenged when I came into church. I was the first in my family. They called me Just Come. <laughs> they tried to shut the door, shut me out. But I just kept pressing my way. Your gift will make room for you. You don't have to have anybody to come get you. Your gift will make room for you. And bring you before great men. So watch God. What he's going to do for you. We love you. We appreciate you. We're looking forward to continuing to work with you. You have a great pastor. Amen. And a great first lady. Hallelujah. You got all the elders and all the ministers supporting you. Do the work of the Lord. God bless you today. Amen. Elders, would you come?
executive directors, if you could come. The executive directors, if you're here, if you lead a ministry, come and greet them as well. So we must pray. 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 So we must pray. 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 Oh, we are a family. Can you just wave your hands? That's been to so We stand together. To the sunshine and the rain, it wrong or Still we love each other when it trusts. for this, our new members of the family this morning. Bishop, can you come back? We're going to take a picture. Amen. Can you guys come up? So we must pray. 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 to praying for our new members. I said, how many commit to praying for our new members? I said, how many commit to praying for our new members? On this side, how many commit to praying for our new members? Amen. Amen. We're about to hear the word of the Lord. The praise team is going to usher us into his presence as you stand with one short song of worship. And we're going to go into his presence. Because worship prayers don't take much to enter into his presence. You're already in a posture so we ask you to lift your hands over the sanctuary and offer up to, to God the praise. And the next voice you will hear will be our bishop. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can we just lift our hands in the house? I'm no longer bound by sin. I'm bound by God's grace and mercy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Here I am to worship, here I am to love, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together love, all together, all together worthy, all together.
softly, here I am. You're all together. It's raging up, I'll never know. Those hands together, all together. Come on, let's clap those hands together to a worthy God. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah to God. We are so delighted to be in God's presence today and thank God for the great weather we've been having. And we're looking forward to the springtime. Amen. They're adjusting the temperature in the sanctuary. So those of you that are fanning very soon, you'll be more comfortable. Look down your row and look at any one of your neighbors and just pick one of them on your row. Just one person on your row. And you're going to keep that person in your mind, in your prayers while we're preaching today. Let's pick one person down your row. <laughs> one person. They don't have to know that you chose them, but you're going to keep them in your heart today, in your thoughts for the rest of this message that God will do something for them. Hallelujah. We're back in the book of Genesis chapter 22. And um, Pastor Stuart had asked me to continue on the, the line of worship. Amen. The worship connection. Genesis chapter 22. You may be seated. We're going to read right down to verse number 12. And then we're going to stand together and read 13 and 14. Are you ready? We're starting from verse number 7. And Isaac spake unto Abram his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abram said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And so they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told them of. And Abram built an altar there and laid upon the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abram stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Let's stand together and read 13 and 14. Together. And Abram lifted up his eyes. And looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abram went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering 
in the stead of his son. And Abram called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Father, we thank you again for your call. And Lord, we thank you for your anointing. That we stand in your presence in the midst of your people and we ask for your glory to rest upon us. And upon them that will hear us today. We pray now that your will will be done here in the sanctuary. Your kingdom will come among us. We ask not only for it to happen here, but around the world, wherever your gospel is being preached and your name is being declared. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. And we give you praise for hearing us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The worship connection. We, in the last two weeks, we've been trying to define for you what worship is. Worship is defined as honoring God for who he is. It literally means to turn around and throw a kiss. Hallelujah. It means to prostrate oneself in homage, it, to do reverence, and to adore someone. And in our case, Jehovah. The image that I like to place in your mind of worship today is, is one of a dog licking his master's hand. When God is worshipped, one is proclaiming that God alone is worthy of adoration. Praise is different from worship. Praise is defined as declaring what God did or what God is doing for us. Worship, however, is not about things. It's about the king. I wonder if I have 10 folks that will throw the Lord a kiss. And, and just tell him how wonderful he is. Thanking you and praising you for what you did for me throughout my life. But I'm glad I have an understanding of who you are. And if you never did one more thing for me. And I have nothing to praise you for. I can worship you because I know on whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. That he's able to act or think. And if he never does it, I feel like the Hebrew boys, I'm not going to bow. I will lift my hands and give you glory. For the rest of my life. Is there anybody that knows God like that? Hallelujah. Oh, we're not talking about gods that have eyes and can't see. And got ears and can't hear. And hands that can feel. But we are talking about a God who has become our high priest. Who is touched with the very feelings of our infirmities. And he's worthy of our worship. Clap your hands and say he's worthy. <laughs> worthy. So we are dealing with worship, not praise. Hallelujah. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. But let those who know God worship him. Hallelujah. In the text, in verse number 9. We, we note some things that are important. And they came to the place, Abram and Isaac, which God had told them of. And Abram built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abram stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. 
And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad. Watch it. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. It bears the need to emphasize and remind you again that worship involves the heart. And whenever you go up to worship God, be prepared that your heart would be revealed. Oh, I feel my help. You cannot worship God and your heart not be involved. You can praise God with your hands. You can praise God with your feet in the dance. You can praise God with your voice. But when it comes to worshiping God, it has to be from the heart. And God is going to make us understand the condition of our hearts whenever we go up to worship him. I like what Deuteronomy said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Second Chronicles 6.30 says, God says, Render every man according unto all his ways, whose heart he knows. For he only knows the heart of the children of men. Whenever you come up to worship God, you need to be aware. I need to be aware that he knows my heart. And in the worship experience, he's going to reveal to me what he knows about my heart. When I read the book, it says the heart of men is desperately wicked. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Who can know it? The Lord searched the heart and tried the reins. I wonder if there's anybody in the house that can agree with Jeremiah that our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, but still he allows us access to worship him. Oh, I'm going to try this side. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Lord searcheth the heart and try the reins. Whenever you come up to worship God, I want you to be conscious that he knows your heart. And the Bible says your heart and my heart is deceitful above all things and Desperately wicked. But still, God wants us to worship him. I want to find a true worshiper in the house today. That you know that God knows your heart. And there's no secret between you and God when it comes to your heart. But still, there's something burning on the inside. You want to... Who wouldn't worship a God like that? Who knows how wicked and deceitful we are. But he says, come before my presence and worship. Come on, help me somebody. Throw your hands up. I know you got your mind and other stuff. You got plans that you made. But, and you're giving God the two hours and you got the rest of your day worked out. But God says, I still want you. To worship me. I still want you to lift me up. And to exalt me. Worship that does not involve the heart is vain. Empty. Void. Have no meaning and no effect. The thing about worship is. If you conclude that that you are deceitful and wicked, 
the enemy will make you hide. But I read in the New Testament, there was a man that was full of demons. He lived among the tombs. They bound him hand and feet with chains. But the Bible says when he heard about Jesus, he ran to worship him. It makes me understand if I want to worship God because I know who he is. It doesn't matter who I am. Oh, I just said a whole lot right there. If I know who God is, I can worship him. And it doesn't matter who I am. But by the time I leave his presence, who I am is going to be changed more into his image and into his likeness. I need somebody who is honest. I need somebody who is truthful. Somebody who knows who God is. And somebody who knows who you are to stand up in your, in your seat and lift up your hands and say, God, I know who you are and I know who I am, but this is my worship. This is my adoration. This is my offering to you. And I believe in there is going to be a change. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus in Matthew 15 says, This people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth and honor it me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me. Brothers and sisters, guest friends, I'm tr- this, is, this is heavy stuff. Worship is about who God is. Not about who you are. Worship is about who God is. Not about who you are. Forget about yourself. And worship him forget about yourself and i need somebody right now forget your problems forget your lying forget your cheating forget your backsliding forget your adultery forget your fornication forget that your child is weak vexed with the devil and just worship God. Forget that you are bound with chains, you are living in the tombs and just worship God because your worship is going to effect a change. Say hallelujah. Slap yourself for the first time on your right knee. Worship is about God and not about me. I don't know how long you've been saved. I won't tell you how long I've been. But I've battled this with the enemy a long time. You come in and you feel the glory. You sense the presence of God. And that's not hard. Because the wind blow it. You can hear him and you can feel him. And then because you can hear him. And you can feel him, something stirs up on the inside to worship him. Talk to me. But then the deceiver whispers into your ears. You can't lift up those hands. Because you don't have clean hands. And you don't have pure hearts. Woo! But God already... I I love this side. God already because he knows the heart and because he knows the heart he's already given you credit to worship him. You don't deserve it. Use the credit. I just helped somebody right there. You don't have the money to buy it but buy it on 
believe that by the time the worship moment is over, there is going to be a transaction. And you are going to be the benefactor. Hallelujah. So, I won the battle a long time. It doesn't matter what my condition is. I didn't come about me. I came about him. Woo! Hallelujah! And I read in the book, if I come into his presence, I'll never leave. I'm trying to find the bright side. I'll never leave the same way I came. But you will leave the same way if you never this is the bright side today. You, the devil will keep you hands folded, mouth shut, heart wicked, and you come out the same way you came. But if you recognize who he is, acknowledge who you are, and worship him, then you will never leave the same way. I'll never be the same again. Oh no, I, since I opened my heart store to him, I need somebody right now in worship to open your. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless. Is it hot in here? It's just me. Please help us, it's hot, it's hot. I feel the fire. Somebody adjust the temperature. But Lord, please don't turn down the Holy Ghost fire. If you feel fire in your soul, shout yeah. His word is like fire. Shut up in my bones. So, so don't attempt to worship God. Pretense. Don't use vain words. Don't give the Pentecostal posture. Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, I'm wicked, but you are wonderful. Lord, I'm desperately wicked, but you are faithful. Say yes! Do you remember the woman uh, that, that she came to Jesus for help and the disciples sent her away and when she tried to talk to the Lord, he answered another word. Remember that? And he said to her, finally, it's not me to take the children's bread. Cast it to dogs. <laughs> what did she say in response to that? That's the problem with us. When, when God tells us who we are, we don't want to admit When God says, you don't deserve this, you, 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 you pull up your, your, your book of remembrance and you remind God, I was in the fasting last week. I prayed three times. I gave my tithe. I gave my offering. I deserve this. But I'm just trying to find the truth tellers in the house because we are the ones you are the ones that's going to get the result of your worship. I need, to, I need you to think about, right now, shut your eyes, shut your eyes, don't look at me, shut your eyes. And think about something that nobody else knows about you but God. Shut your eyes, please. Just, just be, be honest, shut your eyes. Think about something. That nobody else knows about you but God. Not that you gave somebody 
a ride or gave somebody a thousand dollars. Something desperately wicked. Something that you don't want nobody to know. But you know that God knows it. And as soon as you think about it, I want you to jump up on your feet and shout, Truth, Lord. Don't you feel better? You see, the enemy operates in darkness. And but as soon as you bring the issue to light, you just gave yourself power. Throw your hands up and say, truth, Lord. But I love you anyhow. And anytime during the message, you just jump and shout, truth, Lord. This people honored me with their mouth. And Jordan and I with their lips. But their heart is far. If you're going to worship God. The worship experience is going to reveal to you what God knows about your heart. If you're going to connect our hearts in worship, we will have to. Can I push it some more? We will have to give up some of our prejudices, our racial divides. We'll have to tear down cultural walls. Worship does not allow barriers to exist. Because the point I just made, worship opens us up in honesty. And everything that we have erected around ourselves, that we have been taught to, to behave in a certain way, all of those things are going to have to come down. Amen, amen. Martin Luther King said this way. He said, the 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is one of the most segregated hours in Christian America. 11 o'clock around the world, they don't have this to do. Right now, around our country, churches are gathering to worship. But if you take a survey of the congregation. I think it is one of the tragedies of our nation, one of the shameful tragedies, that 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is one of the most segregated hours, if not the most segregated hours in Christian America. Uh, I definitely think the Christian church should be integrated and any church that uh, stands against integration and that has a segregated body is standing against the spirit and the teachings of Jesus Christ and it fails to be a true witness. Uh, but this is something that the church will have to do itself. I don't think church integration will come through uh, legal processes. I might say that my church is not a segregating church. It's segregated, but not segregating. It would welcome white members. It's Black History Month. Hallelujah. And we come every Sunday to worship. But my job is to say to you, he has made of all nations of one blood. And our worship experience is not a cultural one. He's not the God of the blacks. He's not the God of the whites. 
He's not the God of any cultural group. He's the God of all people. And, and when we come to worship, God is going to dig into our hearts and find out where our prejudices are, where our barriers are, where the lies are that we've been told. I, I, I feel to, I noticed by the Holy Ghost to say to you that we like to think that prejudice belongs to another group against us. But I've come to tell the worshipers that we have desperately wicked hearts and we've got people up in our minds that we don't like and that's why we can't share what God is doing because we don't want them blessed. Because in our minds and in our hearts, we think they've been wicked to us. But can I tell you, worship is not about you. Worship is not about what you've been through. It's not about what people have done to you. It's about God. And for God so loved the world that he God so loved the world, not just you. He loved everybody. And if our worship is not vain, we will see the walls coming down. Oh, I feel a praise just it's tight, but it's right. I know you don't like that, but I'm telling you the reason why we don't have more people of different looks and likes in the house is because we have created these barriers that God is trying to penetrate. Martin Luther King said it, nobody's going to write a law to integrate the church. It's the worship of God's people and that's going to integrate the church. It's the worship that's going to change who you are and let you see people not by their color It. Lord, I, I knew you told me. All right. So, so, so let me draw your attention to St. John 4. You remember the story of the Samaritan woman. I like this story. And when I have to preach conventions and to pastors and churches, I like to use John 4. And I like to also use Luke 5. Um, but John 4 is the one that got me, gets me in trouble all the time. Ask me why. Because church people don't like to hear the truth. I thought you would say truth, Lord. Church people like you to play with them. And tell them what they want to hear. But I read in the book a long time, if I be a pleaser of men, then am I not the servant of God. And I don't want to be a part of no church that never preaches and challenges my thinking. I'm going to want truth. So, so I, I told one church, Elder Wayne was with me, I told one church, you know, in the story of the Good Samaritan, before the Lord got to the well, he sent the disciples to go find meat. Because he knew he was going to go meet this woman that they would not approve of. Preach, Bishop. I'm going to be all the time, Bishop, Pastor. I might come back next week. And <laughs> I'm, he, he's good. Can you give Pastor a hand clap? He's good. And, and, and I was in the leaders' meeting, and they said we should keep the time. So whenever I, wherever the time stops, I'm stopping. Now, where was I? He sent them to go my meat to get rid of them because the woman that was coming to the well, he knew they would not approve of him having an encounter with her. What's the application? 
some of you, in order for God to use you, you have to get rid of some of the people that you have around you. Oh, I hear truth, Lord. You are bound by what they think and what they say. All right, write this down if you're writing. When you buy into somebody's story, you have bought their lifestyle. Watch the stories that you buy. Because then you have not become participator of their lifestyle. But the Lord knew you were not going to let your prejudices stop me from reaching this woman. So he sent them to buy meat. He told them, LJ, I'm hungry. Go in town and get me some food. This is what gets me in trouble. Some of us in church are on assignment. That's a decoy. God just sent you to do something that he doesn't really care about. <laughs> He's gotten rid of you. If you want to see a move of God. You've got to have a Gideon experience. 30,000 people can't bring you the victory. You've got to get rid of some folks. Send them on an assignment so they can leave you. That you can do the will of God. Woe well, to any church leader that buys into the numbers game. I don't need numbers. I just need God. If God. Who can be. You got too many people around you. And they're crippling your ability. To be used by God. I wish I had time. The, the will of God. When revealed. His way to the will might not be approved by other people. I said a whole lot right there. It's one thing to know the will. It's something else to know the way. <laughs> Whew. Lord help me. Hallelujah. Because his ways. His will is revealed. But the way he's going to perform the will is equally important. And some people don't endorse the way that God is instructing you. He's leading me in a new way, said God. I played that song back a couple of years ago nonstop. Because I found out what God was trying to do in me was not the way he did it in other people. And I had to draw strength in my worship to do what God wanted me to do and not allow people to stop me. I need somebody who's struggling right now. You know the will of God, but you're struggling with the way because you know your friends are going to think you're crazy. But if I were you, I would walk away and follow the way of Almighty. I need a praise to give. It's not just the will. It's the way. So, so he sent them to go buy meat. Because the way he's going to deal with this woman, they would not approve. <laughs> now he's at the well. Are you with me? Is this helping anybody? They're coming to the woman to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me the drink. You know, I talked about food a couple of weeks ago. You know, 
You know when your, your barriers are broken down? <laughs> when you can take food from people. <laughs> I, I don't mean to say, but I don't think you can hit the demon one time and he goes. Because some of you, they came back seven demons worse and tie you up. So I've come back to the food thing. You are in bondage when you can't eat from people. And one of the best connector is food. When you can sit down with somebody and eat with them and not worry if they're poisoning the food. You know you're breaking the cultural barriers when you can eat what they prepare. I'm going home now because I feel, I, feel, I feel stones being thrown at me. I feel people say, no, Bishop, I'm not eating what they cook. The devil is a liar. Give me the drink. He's saying, use your hands and your cup and pull up water. I'm not discriminating against you. I'm not thinking that you're nasty. You're unclean. Oh, oh, please, I don't have much time. Would you say, truth, Lord, truth, Lord? Truth. Give me some oil over here. Sonia, I don't hear truth from you. Shoot, 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 shoot. I know my people, shoot. Shoot, shoot. The barriers have to be addressed. The prejudices have to be addressed. The cultural differences must be addressed if we're going to be true in our worship. So pastor, I throw a challenge out if it's okay. The next time we have, we have any food function, don't do anything West Indian. Don't let Sister Humble cook. Don't buy nothing from, things, from Jamaican flavors. And watch those who eat. Because those would be your 10,000 that would give you the victory. The rest of them are fake. <laughs> they still got walls. They still got barriers. They still got prejudices. And they're not ready to, for integration. Just a thought to consider. Give me the drink. The woman said to him, how is it that thou being a Jew acts as drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. By asking her for a drink, he was saying, other Jews don't have no dealings with you. But not me. I wish I had some folks say, other people got issues with people, but not me. I'm ready to connect with you and have true relationship with you because I'm trying to connect with God. And you are a child of God. And I can't be right with God and not be right with you. I can't be in relationship with God and not have fellowship if you walk in the light as he is in the light you will have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus cleanse say hallelujah shout truth Lord Racial divides and cultural barriers would stop us 
listen, from experiencing all that God has for us. He said to her, listen, honey, get over that Jew and Samaritan issue. Because if you knew why I'm here, if you knew, you will forget that nonsense. Because I came to give you water that when you drink it, you'll never thirst again. Our barriers are preventing us from experiencing a move of God that will quench the desires of our heart. Nothing is worth me blocking God from giving me what he came to give me. Can I make an announcement? He came to the service. He stepped down in the sanctuary to give you something you never had before. Say yeah. Let the barriers and the prejudices go. So God can do the work in you that he came to do. Breaking down these walls, these bar barriers, these cultural prejudices that we worship will allow us to receive from others what is needed in our lives. When, when, when the Lord pushed her, she said, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. If you don't deal with people that God has brought into your sphere for relationship, you will not receive what God has destined for you. When he got rid of the divide, she asked for the gift. Give me this water. The answer to some of your prayers is in the lives and the, of other people that you don't want to deal with. <laughs> Let me say it again. As you worship God, and as God begins to reveal himself to you, some of the things that you need answers to is not among the people that you are used to. And if you don't break down the divide, you're going to hinder God from using people that he's assigned to help. Church history tells us it were Gentile kings that helped to build the temple. The wood, all the material came from foreign lands. It was Cyrus who, who's, who God touched his heart to help him to build back the temple. Slap yourself on your left knee and say, I'm giving up my prejudices. You're sitting and hanging about with broke people. And the blessed people, you got to learn how to welcome them. Look to your left. Look to your life. Ask them, are you blessed or broke? If they said you're broke, change seat. And find you somebody. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. But if the just don't want to talk to the wicked, there can't be any transfer. Breaking down these walls will allow transfer transparency and, and allow truthfulness between each other. When the walls were coming down, the Lord said to her, go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast said, well said, I have no husband. 
For thou hast five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thine husband. In that sayest thou truly. I'm talking about worship. When we worship, transparency and honesty will be in the sanctuary. <laughs> you see, once you know your heart, and you know God knows your heart, you feel safe to confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you might be healed. I don't understand how we can worship the same God and we can't be honest with each other. I got you to the point where you can be honest with God about who you are. But I want to push you a little further. You got to find some people that you can be honest with about what you're going through. If you confess your... He was not writing to an unsaved church. He was writing to saved folks. Saved people got faults. They got cracks. They got weaknesses. I wish I hear truth, Lord. They got issues that they're dealing with. And they can't be delivered. Listen, listen. Because they all believe the deliverance only comes from God. Some of your deliverances is not going to come from God. If you confess your faults one to another and pray one for another, you will be Worship makes you honest with God. And worship makes you honest with people. And the end result is you are going to be delivered. I need truth, Lord. This woman came clean. When God pushed her. She didn't back up, uh-uh, you're going too far. He allowed her to invade her heart. I don't need your approval for this, but let me say, how many times you, you wished you could open up to somebody? How many times you feel you're carrying such a weight, you wish you could share it? But we come in to worship and we know God knows. And sometimes he delivers. Other times he says, you got to make your worship make you connect with somebody else to share that with. I'm not only, all those who were former Catholics, raise your hands. I used to love to go to confession box. The father knew who I was. He knew, he knew my voice, it's very distinct. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been 40 days since my last confession. I kicked my, <laughs> I stole this. I did this, I did that. God bless you, my son. Go say seven of our fathers. <laughs> and I walked out of that box feeling clean, feeling delivered. They got something that we need to discover. We need to have people that we can confide with. And knowing it will stay. It, it's amazing when you share your burdens. You that are spiritual. You got to learn how to restore others. Say hallelujah. The church. is the sign. For people to have victory. Say amen. amen. Two more points and I'm through. Watch now. When he went there, she said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. When you become honest and transparent with people, you discover their gifts. Yes. When you tell somebody what you, the pain that you're feeling, and they can, they can connect to that pain, you're surprised that the gift of healing lies in their hands. When you bring a problem to somebody 
and you share your dilemma, you'll be surprised that they got the gift of knowledge. When you tell somebody, oh, you want to buy the house and you don't have any money, you'll be surprised that they have the gift of faith. But because you can't be honest with anybody about your situation, you can't discover what is inside of them. Oh, I know I'm preaching good, better than you are saying truth, Lord. There's no need for the gifts of the Spirit to be manifested if there's no need expressed. If I call for those that are sick, then you come in that line, we'll pray for you. If I call for those that are struggling with the loss, you'll sit in your seat. Truth, Lord. You want me to try it out? Say, please don't. <laughs> if I call for those who borrow people's money and don't pay back. But I got to call for the things that is acceptable in the, in the religious circle. Before you respond. But if I start talking about your five relationships. And the other person trying to hang on to you. That's not your own. You'll never say. Truth Lord. So you can't. Perceive the gift. That's available to help you. Say amen. amen. All of that encounter. Brought this woman. To where Jesus wanted to get her. To the point of worship. The worship connection as a chain of events that has to follow. Before we get to the experience we're looking for with God. LJS. When she was, he was through with that, the lady said to him. Our fathers worshipped. How did worship come into this? We're talking about your husbands. We're talking about water. We're talking about prejudices. He's tearing down. Because he doesn't want vain worship. He doesn't want you just saying words. He wants your heart to be honest. So he dealt with all the issues that was going on inside of her. Remedied it. And then he, she brought up worship. I feel I can talk about worship now. I feel comfortable to tell you about my, my religious experience. Let me venture now in the spiritual arena. Our fathers worship in this mountain. But you say Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. I know I'm doing this. She's really asking, am I doing it right? How many are wondering, are you worshiping right? Are you in the right place? Are you in the right frame of mind? Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither worship in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem, worship the Father. He worship you know not what. We worship what we, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm trying to tell somebody today, God is trying to get us to the point of being true to ourselves, 
true to our neighbors so we can be true to him in worship. I want to believe that there are few folks here that believe this is the hour when God is seeking for true worshipers. Can God find somebody who can be honest with themselves be honest with their neighbor be honest about their weaknesses and tear down the barriers and give God true worship I need some honest folks who will seize this hour to lift up your hands open up your mouth and give God a worship Come on, give God some worship. Come on, give God some worship. Come on, give God some worship. Hallelujah. 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 I'm telling you, if you worship God and you're honest before God who you are, drop all the walls, tear down all the barriers, we can see revival like we've never seen before. I close with this. This story gives us the, the point that we need to focus on. When we truly worship God, we will drop our agendas will drop our own businesses we will lay aside our own concerns and worship will make us take on the mission of almighty God slap yourself on your right knee as you stand everybody and say you're too busy to be a true worshiper. She came to the well. With her water pot to draw water. But when the Lord was through with her. She forgot about her need for water. And watch now. She went into the city. And cried. Come see a man. Who told me all that I did? The reason why we can grow the church is because we say we worship, but we're not honest with God, honest with ourselves. And honest with each other. And when we go out there, we can't tell all that God knows about us. Come see a man who told me all that I did. Everybody in the village left to come see this man. That made this woman so honest about herself. Her worship effected a change that changed a city. It's not hard for Hempstead to come see this man if we can just find some true worshipers. Who will relate to God in honesty. Relate to each others in honesty. And relate to a community in honesty. Close your eyes. Father, I pray today. That you'll take the portion of the message and use it
to connect us in true worship. The hour cometh. And now it is. When you, Lord, are seeking for true worshipers. Those who will worship you in spirit and in truth. Break down the divides. Break down our prejudices. Our cultural barriers. The way we've been socialized, indoctrinated. Break down all of our dogmas and break down all of our preconceived ideas and thinking. And as we seek this year to connect by relationship, use worship God as a tool to effect change. We thank you for helping us to communicate your heart. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Give life to your word today, I pray. In Jesus' name. Would you clap your hands together? Come on, clap those hands together. I'm going to make this altar call real quickly. I want some folks today... That you are dealing, you're worshiping God. And you know that God knows about you. But you want God to change your situation. I want you to come onto the altar. Come down to the altar real quickly. And lift up your hands. And tell God, I want, I want an exchange of your grace, your holiness, your righteousness, your power, your healing, your provision. To meet my situation. Will you come on down quickly? Telling him, excuse me, I'm making my way out. Come quickly, come quickly. Elders, will you make your way out? I'm not going through the vein, the emptiness, the ritual. I'm being honest today. I got a need. And I want to worship the God that I've come to know. Who doesn't, who doesn't judge me, but rather wants to save me. It's not his will that any should perish, but it also come to repentance. I am his child. I am his daughter. I am his son. And he's While you're speaking, he will hear. Come on quickly. Come on quickly. Come on quickly. Come on quickly. Before we sing another song, would the rest of you lift your hands up and pray for the persons around you, the person who you took on your mind that I asked you to pray about in your role. Would you intercede for them right now? God touched that person's heart. Open that person's spirit. Move on them, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You don't have to struggle no more when there's a God that can meet your need. You don't have to feel alone when there's a God that comes to see about you. Glory to God. 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 Keep praying, saints. Hands up, hearts open wide. Glory to God. Come on, lift those hands up. Open those hearts.
Can I get somebody else over here to pray with this young lady? I need some more praying saints to come quickly.